My father left our home when I was very, very young. Uh, my mother, we had three kids in the family, my, my brother, my older brother, older sister. And so my father wasn't there. It was just, he was, he abandoned us basically when I was very young. And it really um, opened up the door for a lot of insecurity in my life because after that, my mother attempted many relationships afterwards, but failed and ended in divorce. She was, she was married four times um, before she finally found a good man for her. And unfortunately, he was the only man that I ever let uh, in my life. Um, prior to that, though, as a young child, because of all the abuse that took place, because of my insecurity that I was carrying, people, I believe, um, targeted my insecurity and to act out their abuse on my life. And um, it made me very bitter, very angry. And my mother couldn't handle uh, the anger that I was showing uh, through cutting school at a very, very young age. Um, not coming home until late at night, getting into a lot of mischief. And so my mother sent me to live with my grandmother at a very young age, and so I felt abandoned by my mother. And when I went to go live with my grandparents, my, my grandparents were very um, abusive. They were very abusive towards one another. They were alcoholics. Um, they both would carry uh, pistols. My grandfather was an avid collector of pistols and uh, he would carry one in his boot and she carried one in her bra. And every weekend it was the same thing. It was drink real heavy to the point where a fight would break out. Um, lamps would be thrown. They would uh, then take their guns out. And I remember my grandmother shooting a hole in the wall real close to my grandfather's head. And, um, and then the kids had to come and be rescued by other family members because the police would show up and it was just a very chaotic scene. Um, and then once things settled down a little bit, we would return back to that. And, and when I would go back, because of the scene was so, it was so chaotic, um, my grandfather really, it was just, it was tough for them to even hold their relationship together, let alone manage the kids that were in the house. And, and to know what was going on. And, and at that time, I was being sexually abused by uh, um, my, my grandfather's stepson. And again, this just caused me to spiral in a, a very a very downward, um, just than everything inside, not wanting to talk to anybody because each person that came into my life, it was just somebody that I, that they seemed as if they were, they cared, but I was just simply another opportunity for them to act out their, their behavior and I became a victim again. And so it was many times over that I experienced abuse at many people's hands. You know, I, Again, not living at my home with my mother and my father leaving at a very young age. I was very vulnerable to a lot of abuse with my grandparents being really checked out when they were drunk and partying and doing what they were doing. Do you feel that you've been healed of your father wounds? Absolutely. You know, looking back at my, my father, uh, you know, there were many times, many occasions when I was invited to go up and visit my father because he lives out of town now. And, um, you know, I, I said, no, I'm not going to go. You guys go. My older brother and sister wanted to go. And, I, you know, I was really baffled because, you know, I thought, well, haven't you, have you guys forgot what he, you know, he was never there. Why would you go now visit him? So for a long time there, I just rejected that thought. But again, getting into a healthy environment. And when I began to let the love of God really shine in my heart, I began to really realize God began to remove the veil from my eyes and help me to understand that that, that very message that Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God spoke that into my heart and he said, you must forgive him because he knows not what he did. 
And he goes, the only way that I'm able to rescue people is when people are willing to be brave enough to get over themselves and love someone else. And then God began to speak that into my heart. And so I began to re rejoice at the opportunity to go visit with my dad and really embrace my dad and speak to my dad and share with him my thoughts and feelings. And, you know, I know it made him uncomfortable, but, you know, I, I didn't go there to torment him, but I went to go love him because then I realized that he just didn't know. He was following another voice. He was following his father's voice, but now I'm following my father's voice. And that is to go and reach out to him and love and, and just to be able to just be there and be present with him. I mean, how dare me? My loving heavenly father embraced me when I rejected him. How dare me as a mere human being to sit there and look at another life that is reject, that I felt rejected by that I would sit back and still stand in judgment of that, knowing the love of my Heavenly Father. 